Hello everyone, in this video we're going to have a look at the rainwater harvesting system for a home which should be sufficient for the whole year. Now this is my own house and uh, I've designed the rainwater harvesting system myself and uh, I found that the water collected is sufficient for the whole year. So I thought it would be a good idea to share with you also so that you can also perhaps benefit from the same. Now the design is uh, far from perfect and uh, a lot of improvements still to be done but uh, I hope you'll benefit somewhat from the uh, video. Um, now it is mid-December and you can probably see some of the Christmas lights also in my house and also I have now a baby daughter and our water consumption has increased exponentially but still I have uh, enough water um, for the months to come also. Now uh, there's a saying say for a rainy day but uh, I guess the system says for a sunny day. Jokes apart now let's have a look at the uh, rainwater harvesting components now. So very simple uh, basically you just need a roof it may be um, tin roof or uh, you know slab roof then the, you need a good gutter system here you can see the rain gutter system coming all through then this comes to the uh, preliminary tank so after the preliminary tank uh, some filtration occurs here and then goes to the storage then the, after the storage we pump it, uh, pump it to a final filtration process before going to our homes so this is the basic uh, component layout of the rainwater harvesting system and now let's go to the roof uh, for which the surface area of the roof acts as your uh, watershed area. So let's go up now. So now I'm at the roof now and you can see the greenish portion is the sloping roof goes down and the whitish portion there is the gutter the inside of the tin and uh, this gutter goes down slopes down there below and meets up with the main gutter line. And similarly, we have uh, another gutter in the center here and uh, one beyond there. So all these three uh, gutter lines, uh, they meet up in the main line and they go down to the uh, filtration, preliminary filtration tank and goes down to the storage. Now to determine how much rainwater you'll be able to collect, uh, I'll try to make a simple uh, explanation using basic mathematics. So uh, for, example, for example, in my house, if you go through Google Earth, uh, my area here will be 50 feet into 50 feet comes to an area of uh, 2500 uh, square feet metric units comes to around 232 uh, square meters and uh, I had mentioned in my earlier video on the watershed development that uh, for the northeastern region uh, we can assume a safe annual rainfall of uh, 1000 uh, millimeters per year so if we multiply 232 square meters in 2000 uh, millimeters so this gives us a volume of uh, 232 cubic meters or 232 uh, liters of water so there's a lot of water for my house and assuming 10 percent of uh, lossage uh, loss also you'll still get uh, around two lakh liters of water which you can collect if you divide this by uh, the whole year 365 you'll still get more than 500 liters a day so this should be sufficient for your whole house and uh, since my uh, roof area is uh, quite uh, decent so even if there's a slight drizzle as you can see in the pop-up video uh, I'm able to collect a decent amount of rainwater. So now let's go down to the preliminary filter tank and uh, check out the uh, tank there. This is the preliminary filtration tank and uh, this has two chambers. The first chamber has a combination of bricks and charcoal and uh, the second chamber is a simple settling basin. Uh, this is a very toned down version of the filtration system designed by my father and uh, you can uh, check out the video if you like. Now after the uh, basic filtration this comes down to the storage tank here or the cistern. So the dimension of this one is uh, around uh, 21 feet into 30 feet with a depth of 11 feet. So this gives us a volume of around 196 cubic meters or 196 liters of water. So this is just short of 2 lakhs liters of water, sufficient for your house. Now, the tank has been divided into two parts. Two thirds is meant for winter and one third is for summer. Now you can also have a look at the winter stock now. This is full, even though it's December. So you can see the water is uh, just a little bit short of uh, full and uh, enough for the uh, winter months. Now we had a lot of rain during November so we finished the summer stock uh, just a week back. Reminds me of the song November Rain and uh, we cleaned this recently. And uh, you know this uh, summer tank, one, one third of which is for the summer tank for the monsoon season also acts as a buffer 
uh, storage for the lean the days in between the monsoon the season so let's go down and check the uh, tank below to get an idea i'm inside the tank now of the uh, summer cistern and uh, you can see it's uh, not a small tank it's uh, quite huge in fact and um, there's a lot of echo so i'll just put on cycle side subtitles so that you can understand now uh, the one behind me is for the winter stock as mentioned and in fact this is uh, double the size of this so you can imagine how much water it's holding and this is almost full of water now when it rains the water overflows from the overflow uh, chamber from there you can see the opening and it flows down here once this is full then the water again overflows through this pipe over here and goes to another tank which i'll show you later now you can uh, see and appreciate the dimensions of this tank it's not a uh, you know you know it's not a small tank and uh, the volume of water collected here even for summer is also huge you can imagine the double size of this behind me now when you put the pipe you don't put the pipe all the way bottom you leave a gap of around uh, one feet preferably so that you don't pull out uh, whatever dirt might have settled below so this is uh, left like this and then the later on we clean this up maybe once a year or twice a year like that uh, as per the siltation here so i hope you've understood and you can appreciate the effort gone in the construction of the uh, cisterns here so now let's have a look uh, on top of the overflow now once the water overflows from the summer stock that comes to this tank over here and you can see this is also full of water and this water we can use for any emergency purposes or for our kitchen garden over here for the lawn and uh, you know this uh, has an additional uh, purpose again for the really dry months now let's have a look at the uh, filtration process before going to the house now before consuming the water for our house from the storage tank we pump the water through a simple filtration uh, tank. Now here I've used a 300 litre uh, Syntex and uh, at the very bottom I have gravel. Then at the top of that we have coarse sand, a core layer of uh, charcoal. Then on top of that uh, coarse sand again and again gravel. And at the very top we have a sponge which we can change periodically as and when required. Now after the filtration has occurred in the 300 litre Syntex, this comes down to the storage tank of uh, 2000 litres here, 1000 litre each. And this goes down to our home. You may have noticed here, uh, for pumping I use the 1 inch uh, pipe and uh, for outlet I use the 2 inch uh, pipe here so that you know the system doesn't get clogged up or overflow from the top. Another advantage of this system is that the gutter is inclined towards the top of the hill slope which means that the storage tank or cistern is located at more or less at the same level as the house. This means that the pumping head is not much, so I need a very small pump to pump the water and in fact I only use a half HP pump. Now for drinking water, I use a double uh, filtration system which I'll show you now. Now for drinking water, uh, you'd usually have an RO system like me and uh, what you'll usually have is one pre-filter before going to the main filter. But for me what I've done here is I've added uh, two pre-filters here. So what this means is that uh, I can easily check up on one and once this is clogged up the other one is always there to you know uh, take in the excess load and replace it before the main the filters uh, components there gets uh, clogged up. So the main filter components are uh, expensive and you can keep them running for a longer period of time. So you can also perhaps do this for your filtration system. Now uh, what I have here is the outdoor kitchen and uh, even this uh, roof I've not spared and uh, you know even for a small area like this this 1000 liter uh, Syntex tank is full. This was done just in November and uh, it's already full. So I hope uh, this uh, video inspires you or maybe gives you an idea as to how to go about to build a rainwater harvesting system for your home also. I hope you will like uh, watching this video and see you in the next one. Thank you.